A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. To our distinguished guest, welcome to our today's session entitled Nanotechnology Where Dreams Become True. Few reminders before we begin. The session is recorded. Questions may be raised at the end of the session. We have a very interesting topic. As technology changes rapidly, we will hear today a technology that helps Skokul to considerably improve, even revolutionize many technology and industry sectors, such as information technology, homeland security, medicine, transportation, energy, food safety, and environmental science, and that is through nanotechnology. Our speaker for today is an assistant professor of physics at Mathematical and Physical Science Department, University of Nizwa. He is a nanoscience researcher for more than a decade. He has more than 20, two decades. He has more than two decades working experience as academician. He is a PhD holder in nanotechnology and already published different journals in nanotechnology. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome Dr. Majid al -Rukishi. Dr. Majid? Dr. Majid? Uh, yes, yes. My mic was The floor muted. is yours. Yes, thank you very much for the introduction. Okay, so thank you for everybody who's coming for this lecture. And firstly, I would like to thank also the University of Technology and Applied Sciences. Really, it's a very good chance to see all the academics and the people who are trusted in technology, especially in the in new science sciences like nanotechnology and the others. Uh, really, it is, will be brief and general, okay, because I know, I think the audience of this lecture are diverse. They are coming from different fields. And this is actually the same perspective of an technology. It's like a huge umbrella, okay, for different fields. So everybody from different kinds of sciences, they can contribute actually using this tool, nanotechnology. Okay, so this is why nanotechnology actually is bring everybody to work together as well as, okay, as well as it breaks the boundaries between sciences, as we will see in Shalom. So just have a brief about the uh, patents that can maybe declare a little bit about the importance of this technology. As you can see, the top 20 nanotechnology patent holders are going for the uh, best, actually, uh, companies like IBM, Samsung, okay, and many others, as you can see. And still the race is going on, okay? So they are st starting to develop high tech, okay? Like iPhones, I mean, the phones, screens, okay? All the parts of electronics, as well as, you know, different kind of the industry. So it's a really a huge race. And to understand what is the market of nanotechnology, we can just see these numbers here. 2019, okay, uh, the market actually rises up to 64 billion, you see, only in the nano products. Uh, also, it's not only products in themselves, actually, it is also the uh, way of producing or the production factories that can also produce the devices that can be related to the production of nanoparticles themselves, okay, as well as the characterization techniques that can be used to identify these new properties of these nanomaterials. And we can see also the annual growth rate, which is 19 or 20%. Really, that is huge. More than 1,650 nano products around. I mean, they are actually increasing uh, annually. So increasing in the products, so that means more companies are coming. Okay? It is, yes, at the US, they have more than 1,500 companies. But around the world, more than 400, 500 companies are coming up depending and relying only on nanotechnology, uh, you know, related uh, sources. So you can see this, a lot of advances actually in the industry, in the research, in the uh, new high-tech 
particle uh, product depending only on nanotechnology. But no, I'm not saying only, I'm saying mainly in nanotechnology, but there are no boundaries. So they are taking from different kinds of technologies. Okay. Knowing that, actually, I met a guy, he's a professor, Balkasim Habba. He came across to Oman, to our lab at SKU previously. And we met, and I asked him, what you advise, because he has a lot of experience regarding transferring the ideas to patents, then start to license these patents for different companies for many years. Okay, and he said that really a very amazing, you know, a statement. He said there is no device, no electronic device around you in the world that doesn't have uh, just a portion of our patent. Really, it's a great statement by Professor Al Qasim Habba. He visited us uh, last, uh, I think, before two years. Okay, so that means we have a lot of potential in nanotechnology if we can use them. Well. the smart solutions that can be provided by this technology. Okay. Saying that, let's now, little bit go to the history. So before 150 years, Faraday, everybody knows Faraday. Uh, Faraday, actually, he is the guy who said uh, that I can make something called the magic uh, ink or magic liquid, uh, ruby liquid, which is like a little colloidal nanoparticles inside. You see it right here, which is the, the red dark here, color solution. So within that uh, red uh, a colloidal or metal colloidal solution, you can see there is a small tiny particle. Yes, you can't see it by your, by your eyes now, but really they can figure out that by their microscope at their time. And if you, if you want to have more information about this stuff, actually it was produced 1857, so that means the 19th century, you see. So they start with that colloidal, and that uh, uh, starting up with nanoproducts, they, they always saying that this is the Faraday starting up uh, nanocolloidals, okay? So they refer that important invention to him, uh, and then actually the most step in the history was in, uh, let's say, in the 50s and 60s, Feynman was one of them, it's a very famous figure, a Nobel Prize winner, and he said in his famous lecture, Tiny uh, Mechanics Nanotechnology Lecture, he said that if we can control the tiny, tiny things, okay, so we can play a huge and huge role in the industry. Okay? This is just a very short brief of history, and you can go and read a lot of things about nanotechnology history. So, Let's stop now and say, what is nano size? So now we are speaking about nano material, nano uh, applications. Before that, what is nano size that we are talking about? If we can get these pictures coming from CERN, okay? So let's say now we have this uh, very beautiful picture for you know this garden with these uh, red flowers. This is meter by meter picture, uh, I mean size. We can just magnify that, and then we go for 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter size picture. We can see a small insect there on the you know green leaf. Okay, that insect, if we can magnify a little bit, we can see small features in this in this image now. More magnification, we can see the details of one of one side of the eyes of that you know uh, insect, and then you can see it is a little bit clear but it's colored now. So we can see the color here, the orange color, and the background a little bit dark green, okay? By magnifying more little bit, we can see that there are no colors now. <laughs> By saying no colors, this is a programmed image. It is not using a normal light image, uh, sorry, normal light source. So this is an electronic source to see details by having a powerful electron beam, okay? And that electron beam doesn't depend on the normal wavelength, which is coming from the sun. No, now we are looking for a very tiny wavelength. So why is that? Keep this in mind, okay? After we magnify a little bit more, we can see more features. This is one micron with one micron, okay? So now we are, we are entering now 100 nanometers, 
which is 10 to minus 9. So we can see a little bit more features, but still we are in the you know uh, white and uh, uh, black images. Okay, magnifying more, we can reach a DNA, and everybody knows DNA. The diameter here actually is 2.5 nanometer. Okay, the length of this is 10 nanometer. This is not a real image. Okay, so this is just uh, an image to show you what is the dimension actually uh, comparing with the previous size. Okay, if we magnify more, we can see the carbon atoms here at that small box. And that small box is just one nanometer by one nanometer, okay, we can, where we can see these four carbon atoms attached uh, to each other. So actually the nanometer, okay, it is actually a couple of atoms. They are connected to each other. Like, let's say if we have 10 hydrogen atoms, so they are aligned in one line, okay? So these 10 nanometers, they will make, sorry, these 10 atoms of hydrogen, they will make only one nanometer, okay? So that means the size of the atoms are smaller than the, the size of one nanometer, okay? And everybody actually who is specialized in this, they knew more and more and more, and the, more, the, more than this, but just I want to make it very simple for people who are not familiar with the you know, atom size and nano size, okay? So in general, where is the nano, we call it regime? It is actually from one nanometer, okay, to 100 nanometers. So all the materials that we can make and made in this size, they will have a new properties, unique properties. And these properties can be utilized in different you know, applications. So either we have a bigger size material, we dig it up to form this one, or we start from bottom and collect all of these small, tiny atoms and ask them to make nanomaterials. So either we go from bottom up, all from top down, okay, to make these nanomaterials. Okay. <coughs> in general, you know that, uh, 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 let's in general just uh, summarize the size again. So we know the raindrop here, it's a little bit 2.5 millimeter in diameter. Okay, if we go down by 1000 in size, so then we reach the bacteria uh, regime and Less than 1,000 again, I mean, we are magnifying with 1,000 again, then we go to the DNA. Okay? So to imagine that we are reaching 2.5 nanometer diameter for DNA, it is a little bit like, you know, uh, more, more, more than 1,000 of bacteria. But we can also think about the uh, coronavirus, which is COVID-19, okay? the, the, the famous guy. Okay? <laughs> Last year it was also with, with a diameter between 80 to 120 nanometer, okay, uh, with all the S, S, S protein on the, on the surface. Okay. Because we are limited of time, I'm a little bit hurried in giving these introductions. So actually we are moving from the classical physics, because my background is physics, okay, to uh, quantum physics, because we are dealing with tiny things. So from, total, from totally different regime to another regime. So we have different laws here we need to, harvest and understand, and how can we deal with these new materials by understanding the laws that can give us these you know, tiny, tiny nanomaterials. You can see here the CD and DVD, the differences between them. In the size, in, this, in, the, in, the, in the normal size, you can see they are identical, but actually this one can host 700 MB megabytes, which is, has 4.4 gigabytes. So that means we should make a smaller, smaller rooms here, okay? So then we can store more information with the same availability of the, of the size here, okay? So if we can make computer processes with 3 million transistors in a, in a very small uh, space, so that means we have to make things very small and small by keeping, the, uh, by keeping the, uh, their interaction, the, the process, are very fast and they can give better performance, okay? So this is the idea, how can I make things smaller with better performance, okay? So as I, as I said, there are no boundaries between sciences. So nanoscience is not only for physicists, not, not physics or chemistry, engineering or biology, actually it's all of them, okay? Even mathematics, I mean, everybody can join and deal with nanoscience, okay? So, the question is, uh, are there any created 
things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created certain okay, things around us. They are depending on nanotechnology, yes. For instance, this is a bacteria. Okay? They have these tiny, small nanoparticles inside. This is, can sense actually the, the magnetic field of air. So it can change its direction from now so, south to north. Okay? So if we cha change the polarity of that magnetic field, so then we can see the motion of these, of these uh, bacteria. Can you see the video? Now, now I'm running the video. I don't know if you can see the video. Okay. So this is the bacteria. After this is the white color here. You see? So, it's not started yet, Doctor. Yeah, but it is shown here. Uh, because it's not working within the uh, PowerPoint program itself. It is a separate file, so I don't know. Maybe we need to just, because uh, they have many of them. So, okay, no problem. So this is the idea now. So we have these nanoparticles within the uh, bacteria cell, okay? So, uh, so it's like a steering wheel, okay? So they are using this idea of sensing the magnetic field to know the direction. Really, that is amazing. Okay, so also uh, we are learning from lotus leaf, and this is also very famous. I can't play it because you don't, you, you will not see it, okay? But if you magnify the lotus leaf here, you can see it has what we call it surface nano uh, crystals. Uh, these are the white things here. And these keep the leaf surface uh, with the hydrophobic uh, property. So if you put a water, a drop, a drop of water, you will see that the drop of water is like, like a, a mercury, so it will not stick to the surface. Okay. So now we learn from the nature that if we can make the same thing of this crystalline or nano-crystalline material, okay, and then also we understand the mechanism of the hydrophobicity here. How can we make a hydrophobic material out of this? Actually, we made that one in the lab also. So we are learning from the, from the nature. Something else you can see this gecko. This, this is very famous animal, especially you know, nowadays. Okay. So they are hanging on the ceiling without falling down. So why is that? Okay. So they have this kind of fingers and you magnify one part of the finger, you can see these small features with the nano ends here. You see, as you magnify, you take a one bundle and then you see at the end, you see these kind of very tiny, features here and you can see they can increase the surface to volume ratio at that end so if this one if the smallest uh, branch of these small branches here has a force of 0.005 uh, newton okay so you can imagine what are the uh, integration of all of these you no know, forces uh, toward the wall so it will be easily stronger than the gravity you see so really it is an amazing thing Butterfly also, you can see different colors coming from the wings of that butterfly. So you ask yourself, what is going on there? Okay. Actually, there is something called uh, photonic crystal structures. Okay, subhanAllah, when you magnify here, you can see what is happening here. So it is not a straight or just one full column. It is actually with a small, tiny branches. And these can reflect light, okay? by the reflection and angles that are coming, okay, with the size of these crystal structures, then we can have different colors, subhanAllah. So it's not a pigment, it is not a paint. It is only the nanomaterials with different angles, different incident uh, angles of that light coming to these tiny crystals. So just uh, having also another idea about the types or dimensions of the material. In general, we have three types of uh, uh, dimensional material. As you can see, this is a table, chair, and a paper. Okay. So three of them, they are, they, we call them, uh, or, we, or they are having three dimensional uh, a direction, which is the length and the width and the thickness. Okay, So everything, they are 3D, in 3D uh, dimensional uh, directions. This is the normal life. Okay, but if we see the, the paper here, we can see, yes, it has the length and the width, but the thickness is very small, okay? So why if we can make this thickness of that paper smaller and smaller, 
in the nano regime from 1 to 100 nanometer. In this case, we can ignore that thickness. And then, if we can ignore that thickness, we call this one two dimensional materials, like graphene, for instance. Graphene is just a hexagonal network of carbon, okay, as you can see here. So, the thickness of this sheet, which is a part of graphite, actually, okay, uh, so al faham, if we take one layer of that, okay, it would be graphene. But al faham itself, okay, we call it graphite, okay. So, one sheet of that, actually, it is uh, a carbon atom thick. Okay? So, you can see how small is, how tiny that thick. So, this is why we ignore the thickness and then we, we call it a 2D dimension material. And also, we can see that electrons, they can move in X and Y direction mostly. So, also, we can see that the three bats are two. Okay. And really, it is uh, nowadays they are using graphene in different uh, screens. It's not opening now. I can show you here. I have a video for real life uh, flexible screens that are using graphene actually uh, in the market. Okay. And another one, another dimension, which is one dimension. So now we have two dimensions here and then one dimension. The other dimension goes also because we can produce nanowires. So nanowire is just like a cylinder, and this cylinder here. Okay. It has only a diameter and a length. Okay. So we can say the diameter is less, less than 100 nanometers, so it is one dimensional material. Okay. It's like nanowires, if they are solid, okay. solidified from inside. If it's hollow from inside, you call tubes, like right here. Okay. And there are many types of these nanomaterials. Actually, we produce it like nano generator, we'll show it to you, inshallah that also rely on the zinc oxide basal electric generator. I'm trying now to show this, but maybe at the end of the lecture, I can go only showing you the videos, okay? What about zero dimensions? If you ask any, any man, anybody, I mean, uh, do you think that there are zero dimensional material? Yes. If all of the dimensional dimensions are less than 100 nanometers, so we can consider them as a zero dimensional material like quantum dots, okay? So it's like a sphere, like a ball, as you can see at the left here, okay? So this ball, it has only a radius. That radius is less than 100 nanometers, so we can say that this is like, you know, a zero dimensional material. And quantum dots, they have also uh, very unique properties, okay? Depending on the surface plasma resonance, we can see that it gives different uh, colors at different sizes. You see, so now you're controlling the size of nano dots, okay? And then by controlling the size, you're controlling the color that you can gain or gather from these different uh, solutions now with different size, sizes of the nano dots, for instance, okay? So the dimension here is plays a role in the energy that uh, can be, you know, uh, harvested by using different kind of, 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 of solution concentrations. So why is that happening? I mean, what is it special with nanomaterials in general? Actually, uh, something we said on that, you know, Jaco uh, legs, okay? If you remember, we said something called surface to volume ratio, okay? We have now the bigger uh, cube here and the small cube, which is a part, actually, this is, this is just uh, one uh, variant of this large cube here. So uh, we can see that, if we can, I mean, calculate the surface of this uh, cube, we know if the size is three here, one side of that uh, cube, so then the volume would be 27. And the surface area on all of these six faces will be 54. Dividing the surface to the volume, it will be two. But if we measure that one, I mean, the surface to volume ratio, it will be six, you see? So we have six uh, sides, okay? over the volume, which is one. Why is that? Because the dimension now here become one, and the dimension is here is three. So as we make things smaller, okay, the surface to volume ratio will be huge. That means most of the atoms of that material, it will be, okay, uh, outside the material rather than kept inside the material, okay? Because if you have a bulk material, so all the all of the atoms are inside. So you don't have that high reactivity with the environment. 
to make more react uh, reaction between the inside, okay, hip inside atoms with the environment. You need little bit to make it small fragments. So then you allow these atoms or these molecules, sorry, to react with the environment, like having, you know, uh, you know, um, grains, small grains of sugar, rather than have a bunch of huge uh, part of that, you know, sugar putting on the on tea. Okay? So that you need to wait a long time to see the uh, that bunch of sugar to dissolve, rather than having grains, small grains of sugar. So this is the idea: having smaller nanomaterial, smaller material than you have, high reactivity with the environment. Okay. Uh, in general, what are the properties that maybe, I mean, uh, uh, or the smart properties that can come with nanomaterials? We can summarize them, actually. They are not limited only for these, but in general, we can say the optical properties of the material may be changed. You know gold? So gold, we know it has a gold color, but if you make it a nanomaterial gold, maybe it become purple or maybe red, okay? It's gold, still gold, okay? But the size changes. So the optical properties like color will change also. Transparency like the graphene, you know? So coal, coal is black, okay? Graphene part of coal, but you, if you make on separate graphene, you will see graphene layer is 97.5 transparent uh, material, you see? So transparency was black. This is opaque and this is a, trans a transparent material. So totally, we can see there is a change in the optical properties for certain materials. Electric, electricity or electrical properties also, they can change, especially the conductivity. We know that the graphene it has uh, a ballistic transport for electrons, as well as different kind of nano materials. They can transport uh, electrons uh, better than the bulk material, but it depends actually on the type of that material, okay? Uh, physical, the hardness, melting points, all of this will change actually by changing the size. Reactivity in the chemical properties, uh, reaction rates. So many things that we are dealing in the normal life, we see that it's uh, already common with the common laws and they will, they will never change. When you come to a nanomaterial regime, some of these properties will start to change. So this is why when we said from one 100 nanometers, we are not looking for numbers. Actually, we are looking for that property. So if the property starts to change, then from there we can count for the size. Maybe it will start from 120, 125. So it's not, I mean, the numbers that we are uh, looking for, actually we are looking for the properties that it start to change by reducing the size of the nanomaterial. So I brought many applications. Maybe I will show you later, inshallah, because now I can't show you. Uh, I don't know. I'll try now again. So maybe you can see this. Can you see this? No? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, okay. Not yet. I don't know what's going on. So yeah. what I'm trying to say here, there are plenty of nano applications. You can just go to, uh, to YouTube okay, or Google and then you can find many things regarding the uh, nano glass, especially uh, in the, uh, the windows or maybe car windows, as well as nano filtration. Maybe they are using also in medicine. Not maybe, I mean, it's actually used in medicine, especially for the, you know, uh, vaccines, you know, biotech. Uh, you know, I don't want to go in that side, okay, now, but you can see and read about how can they use Okay, uh, uh, like you know, <laughs> nano carrier. Let's call it now nano carrier that can carry the drug. Okay, sometimes the vaccines, sometimes the treatment to a certain places inside the body. So really, they are using these nano capsules. Okay, in the uh, in the uh, medicine, as well as you know, I mentioned here the uh, uh, the cancer treatment. It's, this is not final treatment. Really, they are trying to use you know, uh, gold nanoparticles for treat the uh, uh, lung cancer, as well as some tumors in brain and other uh, parts of the body, okay? So we can use these nanoparticles as a drug delivery uh, particles 
something, as well as we can use them directly to go to the tumors by just re-engineering their surface because uh, the uh, medical people here, they understand what we, what we should do with this uh, nanoparticle surface so they can attach to only a certain cells, which is the tumors, not the other cells, not the normal cells, okay? Because we are targeting only the uh, unwanted uh, cells, which are like tumors, and then we can release the drug. We can also send an external microwaves for that specific okay, uh, nanoparticles. And maybe these nanoparticles become hotter and hotter, and by increasing the temperature within that cells, it can also uh, kill that cell, which is unwanted cell. So, so this is just uh, a lot of uh, research going on uh, with rats, okay? And a lot of I mean, successful uh, research have been done in that uh, manner, okay? But still the question, how can we get rid, rid of these nanoparticles from the body? Because we still have the accumulation of these nanoparticles, especially in the tiny uh, places in, in kidney and other places. So <coughs> how can we take rid of these nanoparticles? Still a question, uh, research problems, okay? Uh, we can return to that question that, as I said, put it in your, in your background regarding the colors when we are trying to see uh, the, uh, uh, the nanoparticles. We, we saw first a very beautiful, colorful picture and then black and white, okay? So why is that? Actually, now you can see we have two lines, this line left to the left and another black line to the right, okay? So we are sure there are two lines now, okay? But now we are looking only at one line. So what is the difference between the first situation and the second situation? Uh, the first situation, we can see the distance between them. Okay, so then we can differentiate between these two lines. So the idea of resolution actually is to see the distance between objects, okay? But if you, if you can't see that uh, distance, so you can't say, you can't tell that these are two or one, okay? So this is why we need to develop electron microscopes to see more small features and distances between these nano features. The normal light, light microscope is not enough because the resolution or that distance we want to see is just 0.2 micrometers. And as we can do, I mean, the most thing, I mean, the thing that we can do with this apparatus is just we are changing the oil that can uh, change the, uh, the refractive index, okay, for the coming lights. And the maximum it can go is almost five. So that is not enough actually to have more light coming through the basement. Okay? So how can we have a better, a small D here? How can we have a better uh, 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 differential, let, let's call it uh, resolution, yeah. How, how can we have better resolution? We should look here in this, in this time for lambda. We should make lambda small, okay? So how can we make lambda small? We should introduce electrons now. So we are looking for smaller wavelength, and that means we should accelerate these electrons by introducing huge voltage here, okay? Having small electrons, sorry, small wavelengths with the high speed electrons, then we can see small and small features actually, okay? And this is well known uh, machine for you, which is if you are in the, in the field, if you are not, this is called transmission electron microscope, where they are starting to accelerate and accelerate the beam of electrons, so then they can hit the sample, okay? And then we can see the shadow of the part of the, of the uh, specimen if we have, let's say, uh, a road or like, you know, uh, a sphere. So we can see the shadow here down, okay? So we put the sample at the middle here. This is because all the light will just uh, penetrate without anything and the, 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 the shadow will be shown down there. So this is like, this is a very simple, you know, explanation for transmission electron microscope. Many things you can do with this machine, okay? This is also another one, scanning electron microscope, where you also, you can see the surface. So you scan the surface. You have mountains, valleys, whatever. You can use that electron beam, okay? At, at certain, you know, uh, acceleration voltage, and then you can see the result. And the result, as I said, it's programmed here. So now we have a detector that can detect many things coming from the 
specimen. There are more than six or seven things that you can see from the specimen. X-rays, you know, secondary electrons, uh, OJ, many things, <laughs> okay? But then it should be programmed. I mean, there is, you know, transfer from that energy to a picture that you can see, okay? So let, let's speak now about the 2D material. I said only, I said graphene as an example of 2D material, but actually in life, there is not only graphene, there are many of them, yeah? So graphene, it comes from carbon, which we said that these are carbon atoms, okay? So the thickness is here, just the atom carbon thick, thickness. But also we have another types, okay? Like here, we have, <coughs> sorry, diatomic hexagonal boron nitrite. Yeah, this is a very famous uh, 2D material, okay? And you see, now we are trying to make yeah, this is actually, nobody was thinking that we can use these kind of materials. You see, a 2D material with a, with a very small thickness, so they have a new uh, and unique property, okay? Another type of these uh, 2D materials, they are mixing between these trans uh, transition uh, elements with this, you know, uh, a group here, okay? So uh, they can mix them together and they make something called uh, TMDs, okay, materials. And also these TMD, these TMD materials, you can read about them. They have also special uh, properties they are using, and they are already used in different applications. Okay? As well as also they, they slice like silicon. They make also one layer of silicon, one layer of uh, germanium, okay? And they call it, you put the letter here, silicene, instead of X here, silicene, okay? And then you can make also the other ones uh, with the same layer here. So you see, it's actually another word. So they are opening another word. They call it 2D materials from graphene to different kind of materials, okay? So this is just in general, I'm not going in details in this, in this, this is, this is can be another lecture actually. Yeah, so graphene is coming from a graphite, as I said, but you know the most uh, uh, important allotropes of, of carbon that is just the diamond and the graphite. This is what we know from before. Okay, so from pencil you can make graphite, but if you can change the orientation, maybe you can get diamond. Okay, uh, this is the, the the diamond structure here at the left. Okay, so what are the new allotropes? This is man. I don't want to say man-made but man discovered and isolated, okay? So human, humans start to isolate this one, a okay, graphene from graphite. So all of these together are graphite. They are attached with van der Waals forces together, so they are graphite. If you just separate and isolate one of them, this is graphene, we call it graphene. One layer of graphite. If you can rule it up by this way, it's called uh, carbon nanotubes. And the ruling process here makes different kind of carbon nanotubes, and there is a, a timetable, uh, there's timetable, there is a table of carbon nanotubes. There are many of them with different and unique properties, okay? The third uh, shape also, also is fluorine, so you can make a sphere-like structure, okay? If you have a 60 carbon atoms, okay? So in Smiley Labs, they made that. This is Legima Ward, and this is Manchester in this of Manchester world. So we can go a little bit very fast on this. So they start actually with fluorine, with this sphere, 60 carbon atoms. They are, I mean, built with this uh, very uh, fantastic, really, structure. And they actually have, uh, they make materials very strong. They have a potential uh, in, in, in medicine. And also, they make battery last for a long time, OK? Uh, really, they got the Nobel Prize for their work. Okay, in 1996, uh, Richard Smiley, Robert Kuhn, and James Hay. Okay, so all of these scientists, they make an advantage in nanoscience by producing this structure in 1996. You see Nobel Prizes, they are going for nanotechnology. So carbon nanotubes, they discovered in 1991 by Somio Lajima, the, the, the Japanese scientist. Okay, and this is single wall, this is multi wall. Uh, and also it has a very unique uh, experimental and theoretical properties. You can read here what are these properties for single wall and multi-wall nanotubes, okay? 
Then in 2004, graphene was isolated by these two gentlemen from Manchester University. And they said after they studied this material, uh, the thinnest, the finest, the purest, strongest material known to man. Okay. Uh, so Guy and uh, his colleague, they start to say that having one layer of, of, of carbon, which is graphene, we can actually make different and many applications out of graphene. So from 2004 up to 2010, they got the uh, Nobel Prize for their work on graphene. And my colleague, Dr. Tariq Mohideen, uh, uh, at uh, uh, Sultan Qaboos University, he was a student doing his master's and PhD, actually the same research published in science and nature uh, with them uh, and this work really. And this is why he brought all of the experience last time at SQU. Uh, I was also in the same group, so we worked together to initiate the first lab there at SQU, uh, 2011, it was in December. Uh, so we got the experience and then we got the connection with the University of Manchester to continue some of the you know, research between the two uh, institutions. Now also I'm carrying on uh, doing the same research from the University of Nazwa with the SQU as well as with the uh, University of Manchester, especially National Graphene Institute there. Yeah. Okay, so and this is just in general, this is a real life graphene. You see this is purple color here? So this is a real life single layer, okay? And this graphene was actually taken by Scottish tape. Okay, so they put Scottish tape on the uh, high ordered graphene, okay, and then from there they start to reduce that layer. So then we end one with a single layer, like that color. And from the color, actually, they can tell that this is a single layer and not a few layers of graphene. Okay. Can <laughs> read about that one? Uh, the structure. How can we work and understand the graphene? by using tight binding model, for instance, for people who are in, in, in this field, they knew having this kind of structure with the, uh, with the conduction band and the valence band are meeting in that only point, the rock point. So the ballistic transport of electrons will be very huge here. You can see this is only the point that these electrons can move very fast and they are relying on the momentum of the X and Y directions, okay? This is also, we can, I mean, I give this lecture really uh, in Malaysia, uh, explaining what are the details of graphene and how can they understand dealing with single layer, few layers of graphene, and can, how can we engineer the, uh, uh, the energy gap in graphene, okay? So uh, uh, this is actually uh, the, uh, uh, a graphene structure, uh, just uh, this is the real life okay, with PEM, transmission electron microscope image, and this is just showing you uh, the uh, orientation of the molecular structure of graphene. I, I want to show you actually the real life uh, graphene screen, which started, uh, started sorry, June, 20, 20th June of 2010, and what is the development since then? on that sheet, but because now I can't show you, please go to the YouTube and try this. You can see many things about graphene screen applications, even in solar cells, okay? So uh, many things uh, regarding uh, graphene solar cells, especially at the surface, because graphene is a conductive material and also transparent, uh, transparent material. So indium oxide, instead of using indium oxide, which is a little bit brittle, you can use graphene, okay? It can conduct and also it can also allow light to go inside. Okay? Also, you can play actually with the active material itself, not only with the with the top surface, by introducing like you know uh, uh, nanowires because they have a huge surface to volume ratio. So the harvesting of energy will be more and more. Okay, so there are many things that you can deal or you can make with solar cells based on nanotechnology support. You can make flexible actually of these uh, solar cells. I know the, <coughs> the um, efficiency of solar cells still, still not that huge, okay? But by having more flexible, okay? Um, more uh, uh, thinnest or thin cells, then you can have 
a huge uh, uh, or, or more uh, uh, gain out of these solar cells. This is just real life prediction of our uh, last lab, okay, on us, uh, at SKU. Uh, this is, these are silicon nano wires, but we call it nano cakes. As you can see, it's like a cake. I'm hungry now, so I want to take you know <laughs> one cake of that, okay. So we produce actually these silicon nano wires in this shape by introducing uh, gold spheres at the at the beginning. So we we, we put the uh, gold catalyst at the surface of the silicon. And then we heat it up. Then we have these small spheres of uh, gold nanoparticles on the on the top of the surface, and then we keep it only for five minutes so that we, we control the time in the CVD reactor. Okay, and then directly we introduce the uh, silicon growth. So from there we can see most of the uh, uh, gold nanoparticles or gold alloys actually. It is not 100% pure gold nanoparticles. They start to run off, and then the places they were in, it will lift without any growth, as you can see here. And then we saw something uh, amazing that nearby the edge of the uh, alloys, of the uh, gold silicon alloys, they are becoming more thicker, as you can see, and a little bit apart from there, from that, we can see they are small grasses, like, like the grass, actually. And we have this unique uh, structure. So that means we can control also the shape of nanoparticles. Here we have like flowers like uh, nanoparticles to the left, to the right. We can see this is like wires. Okay, they are coming from set. So, the, so this is our production actually, and also all of these are public. Uh, so we can control the shape, and the shape is important because because you can use it at different electronic uh, uh, you know devices. Also, we produce nano combs. You see this comb? You see, we call it a single comb. Also, we, can, we have also a double sided comb. So, a single side comb, or maybe a double sided comb. And this is, can be used in different kinds of applications. Also, this work is published. Okay. Also, we produce tripods, rockets. Uh, these are uh, <laughs> we just you know the cakes and the flowers. I will skip that. So what are general, uh, uh, let's say, applications that we make? We start to make drilling fluid enhancement. We know that uh, when you would drill for oil or water, okay, so we, you need a solution that keep all the additives within that solution. Okay? So the idea was how can we reduce the water loss? So alhamdulillah, by introducing a certain type of nanoparticles, we managed to do that okay, with, diff with different shapes and with different sizes also. Also, this is published. Another thing we, we made, heavy oil viscosity reduction. So nanoparticle can help actually to reduce the viscosity of the oil. And we know this is actually a problem because if you go, if you, uh, go and look to the north fields in Oman reservoirs, you can see this is a huge problem because the cost that you need to take out all of this heavy oil from beneath, it doesn't cost the oil that you will get. So, so really, you need to do something with this uh, problem. Okay? So we introduce uh, iron oxide okay, nanoparticles that can uh, be within the asphaltene, which is the most uh, heavier uh, substance within the oil. Okay? And then we can introduce an external, an external microwaves that can heat up these iron oxide nanoparticles. And that heat can break the, the long chain of this asphaltene and then from there, we can reduce uh, uh, this viscosity to have a little bit less uh, viscous, okay? And really, you can read the paper. I don't know, I don't have the link here, but anything mentioned here, if you can go to the Google Scholar, okay? And write Majid al then you can see the things that are published there. Okay, this is just a simple explanation what is going on by hitting the roads of nano of the uh, iron oxide nano rods by external microwave radiation. Okay? Another thing we make, which is the nano generator. Okay? This is the device to the left here. So by having or, or giving a mechanical stress, mechanical stress, then you will have electricity. And that relies or depends on the base electric uh, phenomena that comes from zinc oxide nanoparticles. Okay? So we are producing, first of all, 
zinc nanoparticles using CVD, chemical vapor deposition. And from there, we can make, or actually we made the device, okay? So this was actually one of the final year projects, and the students uh, make the device that can uh, reach, I think, 0.7 volt maximum, okay? And really it depends on the orientation of the nanoparticles, the type of the nanoparticles that you are using, okay? As well as the electrodes, okay? So uh, because you have a shockly, a shockly uh, 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 barrier, and you need also ohmic barrier. So you need to make the, the direction of the current, uh, you need to direct the, the current in one direction, okay? So you need to play with all of that uh, to get the, the current uh, smoothly moving from the device, okay? This is another thing, maybe I will end with this. So hydrophobic cement blocks, okay? So we try to make uh, cement blocks not only hydrophobic at the surface, okay? So they, they don't like water at the surface, no. I mean, even if you cut them into pieces, all these pieces also still have the same property. So they are hydrophobic uh, in all, uh, you know, uh, material within that blocks, okay? So really it was a tough problem because now we are dealing with chemistry. My background is physics. So I read a lot of things to how can we maintain this and how can we continue uh, producing smaller or larger uh, piece of these nanopart uh, uh, smart blocks without having the accumulation and aggregation of these nanoparticles when they are mixed together in a chemical way. So, because you have to take care about that one. What are the kind of stabilizers that you're going to use to produce such a smart cement blocks, okay? Uh, these are general or few, actually. Uh, nowadays, we have more and more products coming or relying on nanomaterials. You can just uh, put on Google what are the nanomaterials, especially now in the iPhones or I don't, I don't want to say iPhones, I mean telephones <laughs> or the you know, phones. They are not only the transistor, not only screens, okay? But they are going in all different details of, of the phones, depending on nano uh, materials. Um, you can see here at your left, okay? Uh, there are different things related to your daily life, really depends on nano materials. So you need to sleep nano, huh? sleep with nano. <laughs> okay. And these are socks. So they are, these socks, they should, okay, uh, eliminate any external bacteria that can produce the unwanted smells, you know? So you, you, you need something to, to last for long uh, and without any uh, bad smell, okay? So these socks are very good for that. Okay, phones. We dream about phone. This is actually was a very old image of Nokia. So Nokia now doesn't exist, okay? But the image is still there. And we have the shape of this. It's coming from different companies now, okay? This is in general for uh, the people who are not in the research field, the people who are not working with scientific journals, okay? Uh, you can go and learn from Google scholars, from research gate, from academia. These are like a hubs that uh, all the researchers, they can come together, they discuss, and they can upload their uh, scientific papers for free, okay? Uh, I think, yes, most of them, yeah. Uh, so this is just in general. But for the people who are in science, they knew how can they search for scientific journals, okay? Uh, this was really the work with the team at SKU, Sultan Qaboos University, so I thank them. Uh, for their work, uh, from the technicians, from the students, everybody there. And inshallah, here also at uh, Nizwa University, inshallah, we'll start to do a lot of work in nanotechnology. And I'm receiving a very beautiful encouragement and positive, you know, support coming from the dean and from all the staff uh, in the university. And we hope, inshallah, we can also start uh, research uh, very strongly uh, in this university. Actually, I didn't mention that we have different uh, kind of collaborations with different international uh, universities. Uh, and we are also welcoming anybody who wants to contribute and you want to 
uh, be part of the research. Uh, so this is uh, my email at the middle here, Majid, U-O-N, at university, Nazwa, dot edu dot om, okay? This is an old website. So this will be changed, inshallah. But this is still running. I make it myself, actually, that time. Okay. Also, you can visit this website, and then you can send any message from there. It will be emailed to me. This is my Twitter account. Also, you can contact me from there. Sorry for making things. No, I think almost we are within the time, alhamdulillah. So we have five minutes more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Majid, for an enlightening and interesting presentation on nanotechnology and how uh, really dreams can be transferred into reality, but maybe not all the dreams. <laughs> uh, anyway, we still have five minutes uh, if there is any question. So if you, you may raise your hand to, uh, or you can unmute yourselves if you have any question. There is one question from uh, Dr. Khaled. Yes, Dr. Khaled. Dr. Khaled. Khalid. Alaikum. Yes. Yes. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, valuable uh, presentation for this uh, uh, part of. Uh, uh, science, thank you very much. But uh, just a small question. Uh, I'm working with uh, uh, modified electrodes. Then I used, after that, the electrode deposition of uh, nanoparticles uh, and, and nanoscale, of course. So I need to ask about the stability. Now I, I, I have a lot of material in this uh, in different branches. I'm looking for a study of the stability. For example, uh, is it useful to use uh, uh, some deposited metals in the nanoparticles or in the nanoscale uh, for a long uh, state? For example, like a sensor. I'm preparing a sensor, then I want to use this sensor uh, for different uh, uh, experiments. Uh, is this a study uh, for uh, how long maybe it will take or uh, for one use? Uh, uh, if you have something like that, I would appreciate that one. I can't hear you, doctor. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can hear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Khalid, for your... Dr. Khalid, yes? Yeah? yeah, thank you very much, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Khalid, for your question. Yeah, thank you. So uh, uh, this question is not only for sensors, actually, it's for uh, any kind of uh, engineering devices that you want them to work for a long time. So usually what the people are doing, they are adding these particles, nanoparticles, with a specific size, as you said, after they add the stabilizers, for what we call it a composite material. Okay, yes. so they are sometimes using polymer, sometimes using different kind of materials, but that uh, material or the ma matrix, okay, the matrix it should also uh, uh, play a role in your sensing. If you are looking for gases, so you need to have that uh, uh, bulk material or the matrix that you, or the matrix that you are using, um, it should be, you know, uh, with a certain porosity. So it depends, it's, it's something that you can see 
the uh, the supporting material plays a role. Okay, the nanomaterials and the size of them plays another role. Okay, and also uh, what are the things that you are trying to sense? Also, that is another issue. Okay, so in this field, I think the most likely uh, better way to control the nanoparticles and keep them for longer time is to use the uh, composite uh, way of structure that can help you to keep the nanoparticles for lo long time sensing, as well as uh, you, you, you need also to check, okay, the working time of these nanoparticles, because yeah. even in lithium ion batteries, people that are looking for cycles. So sometimes they are think coming also from the supporting material that can also reduce the efficiency of these nanoparticles. So for certain, uh, let's say, property that looking for the nanoparticle, you should also use or choose the uh, certain supporting material, uh, and then you make your own composite, and then you try to modify that. I think this is only the thing that I can contribute in okay. this part, but this is not in my work, actually. It needs more chemistry here, okay? So yeah, thank you, thank you. That thank is you. the gate. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. We are almost done, uh, uh, Dictor. It seems that there is no other question. Um, at the end of this talk, once again, join me to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Majid al ruqayshi for his informative talk. Thank you one more time, Dr. Majid. Assalamu. Uh, most welcome. Thank you for the invitation. And hope I uh, make everything clear and uh, explain well. So thank you very much. See you all. Thank you very much.